Did you know that the average scuba diver kicks thousands of times during a typical one hour dive? And that has a huge impact on your ability to maneuver and save air. That's a lot of legwork. Now imagine doing all this kicking with the wrong fins. It's like trying to run a marathon in flip-flops. It's possible, but definitely not enjoyable. I've bought way too many fins over the years and have learned the do's and don'ts about finning. And in this video, I'll show you the truths about scuba fins nobody tells you that will make those thousands of kicks feel like a breeze. Our first stop is to discuss a critical thing that nobody talks about for fins that will make or break a scuba fin's value to you and how to use it. We're talking about more than just sinking or floating. It's about finding that sweet spot of balance underwater. This will ensure you can utilize your fins properly to maintain proper trim posture in the water. When it comes to fin buoyancy, fins come in three main buoyancy types, positive, negative, and neutral. Each has its own pros and cons, and choosing the right one can make a world of difference in your diving experience. Let's break it down now. Positive buoyancy fins are like the helium balloons of the underwater world. They tend to float up, which might sound great at first, but it can cause your legs to rise and your head to dip down, which is called negative trim. Imagine trying to swim with your feet constantly trying to break the surface. It's not exactly the streamlined position we're aiming for. On the flip side, we've got negative buoyancy fins. These are designed to counteract the positive buoyancy of wetsuits and dry suits. They help keep your legs down, promoting a more streamlined position in the water. But just as positive buoyant fins can make you into negative trim, these ones can push you into a positive trim. So does that make neutrally buoyant fins the best? Not really. What is important here is that your fins can drastically affect your trim. So you'd want to pick the buoyancy of your fins to counteract the weight of your upper torso and bring your body back to that neutral trim. But use your fins to counterbalance last. Only once you've adjusted everything else, then start looking at your fins buoyancy. A very general statement, but will depend on person to person, is if you want to use more positively buoyant fins, generally they work better in warm water and negatively buoyant fins in cold water. Since cold water will require more weight on the upper body, negative buoyancy fins helps bring the legs back down and so you will have better neutral trim. The key is to understand how different buoyancy types interact with your body position and diving style. The next thing that hardly anyone will tell you, and I've seen many divers get this wrong, is also one that will keep you from hurting the environment or potentially keeping you getting blown away at a dive site. This fin attribute will allow you to ensure you pick the proper fin for the conditions and type of diving you'll be doing. Let me share with you a story that I once saw a scuba diver struggling with a pair of free diving fins. Those elongated blades, perfect for quick dashes, to the reef and back to the surface were causing chaos in a confined space of a reef for a scuba diver. The diver was kicking unintentionally into delicate coral and stirring up sediment with every move. It was textbook case of using the right tool for the wrong job. Fin length is all about finding the balance between power and maneuverability. Think of it like choosing skis for different snow conditions. Just as you wouldn't use the same skis for powder and moguls, you shouldn't use the same fins for all diving scenarios. Longer fins, but not free diving fins, are the powerhouses of the underwater world. They excel in open water and strong currents, sharing more thrust with each kick. These fins can be a game changer when you're fighting against a current giving you that extra oomph to make progress. But don't get me wrong, longer fins aren't always the answer. In tight spaces like caves or wrecks, they can be more of a hindrance than a help. 
It's in these environments where shorter fins shine. They offer greater maneuverability, allowing you to make quick turns and navigate narrow passages with ease. Keep in mind that longer fins generally require more leg strength. If you're not prepared or are using improper finning techniques, they can lead to faster fatigue than shorter counterparts. It's important to fin in a relaxed manner at all times to prevent becoming winded while you dive. Many divers fall into the trap of thinking longer fins always means better performance, but in reality it's all about matching the fin to your diving style and environment. If you're a fan of flutter kick, longer fins might be your best bet. But if you prefer frog kick, especially in confined spaces, shorter fins might be the way to go. Ultimately, the right fin can dramatically enhance your diving experience, whether you're gliding effortlessly through open water or expertly maneuvering around a coral head. Having the appropriate fin can make you feel like you're dancing underwater instead of struggling against it. Next, let's look at one of the most distinguishing pieces of a fin, but still one that is not very obvious how it affects your diving experience and one that is not very clear or discussed often. This particular attribute is the one that receives the most attention and will likely help to subcategorize fins faster to the type of fin you actually need. Just like choosing the right tires for your bike can make or break your ride, selecting the appropriate fin blade can dramatically impact your diving experience. There are two main fin blades to consider, but one of them has several subcategories. There is the blade fin, which can be broken down to paddle and forced types. The other fin is split fins. Each fin has its own unique characteristics. Let's start with paddle fins, the classic workhorse of the diving world and are usually molded together with a consistent material, but sometimes have channels that form grooves of a slightly different material to allow as the fin is moving in the water to form different shapes that make it more hydrodynamic. These fins provide significant power with a wide blade and can be suitable for frog and flutter kicks. And perhaps a subcategory of paddle fins is channel fins, which are really just like paddle except for they will generally shape more as you're finning. They can be used interchangeably and are using kind of sophisticated technology. One thing to watch out about channel fins is sometimes they use much softer material which could be a failure point in the fin over time. So generally, I will prefer a more consistent material versus one that has weaker material in between the blades. Now, let me introduce you to the split fins, the unconventional rebels of the fin world. These fins feature a unique design that divides the blade into two sections. It's like having a pair of racing slicks on your bike. They're all about reducing resistance and allowing for a more natural kicking motion. They're particularly beneficial for divers with joint issues as they can reduce strain on the legs or divers that do not have powerful kicks and want relatively easier strain on the legs. However, like racing slicks, they do not perform well in all conditions, especially strong currents. Lastly, we have our force fins, or as I called them earlier, free diver fins. Resembling a whale's tail, these fins are designed to provide substantial power with less effort. They're lightweight and efficient, best suited for shorter flutter strokes. But remember, they may not be the best choice for everyday diving conditions. And in fact, I would often advise against them for scuba diving. It's important to realize that each fin type supports different finning styles. All fins can be used with flutter kicks, but only some fins are easier to use with frog kicks. These are paddle and channel fins. Ultimately, while split fins might seem appealing for their ease of use, they can potentially hamper your growth as a diver without knowing the specific cases in which they should be used. They may limit your ability to perform certain types of kicks and could be less versatile in challenging diving conditions, so use them as a tool for the right job. Also again, force fins have limited usefulness in scuba diving due to the need for a diver to be in close proximity to other divers, environment, and sometimes tight places, which do not make them practical to use. As all things, all these fins can be a great fin for those who need them, but they should not be a go-to fin to fixing 
finning technique issues. On the other hand, paddle fins with their traditional design offer a good balance of power and versatility, making them a solid choice for most divers. Next up is one of the ones that a lot of dive shops may misinform you on, but can drastically change how much you enjoy the dives, especially repetitive dives. This one will help find the right fin for you by practical measures, like sizing a shoe to a foot. Imagine you're about to run a marathon. You've trained for months, you're in peak condition, but on race day, you realize your shoes are just too small. Ouch. Now picture that same scenario underwater where every kick counts. That's the reality of diving with ill-fitting fins. I learned this lesson the hard way during a two-week diving trip where my full foot fins literally rubbed my skin off. I kept diving, but it was a painful experience. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. When it comes to fin foot pockets, you've got two main options, open heel and full foot. Think of open heel fins as the hiking boots of the diving world. They're designed to be used with diving booties, making them ideal for cold water or shore diving where you need that extra protection. Full foot fins, on the other hand, are more like a pair of slip-on shoes. They're lighter, create less drag, and are perfect for warm water conditions. With full foot fins, it's important to note that because you can't just walk there with booties or shoes unless you plan on putting your shoes near the dive site, you have to be able to walk there barefoot because usually when you put on your full foot fin, you will either put them on barefoot or with socks. But here's the catch. While full foot fins might seem appealing for their simplicity, they sure can be limited. Sure, they're great for tropical waters, but what happens when you want to explore a deeper wreck with colder water? That's where open heel fins shine. They offer versatility, protection, and comfort from a booty, allowing you to tackle a wider range of diving environments. And let's just talk about straps for a moment. Open heel fins come with different strapping options, each with its own pros and cons. Spring straps are durable and stretch to fit, but once they're set, that's it. Adjustable straps give you much more control, but can be a pain to manage with cold or gloved hands. Then there are the bungee straps, lightweight and easy to use, making them the popular choice for travel fins. I prefer bungees myself. They're easier to put on, even with gloves. It's important to realize that the foot pocket itself can vary significantly between models. Some fins, like Scuba Pro Jet Fins, have a reputation for feeling like they were molded with a 2x4. Not exactly a pinnacle of comfort. It's something you really need to try on to get a feel for. Ultimately, the right foot pocket design can make a huge difference in your diving comfort and your versatility. It's not just about avoiding blisters, although that's important too. The right fit can improve your finning efficiency, reduce fatigue, and enhance your overall diving experience. Remember, you're not just choosing a fin, you're selecting a key piece of equipment that will be with you for hundreds if not thousands of underwater kicks. Ultimately, the one fin to rule them all is a bit of a myth. Different diving environments and personal preferences mean that what works for one diver might not work for another. However, you can minimize the number of fins you need considering your most common diving scenarios. For instance, if you primarily dive in cold water with a dry suit, a negative buoyant fin like Scuba Pro Jet Fins might be your best bet. On the other hand, if you're a warm water enthusiast who loves to travel light, a more positively buoyant and packable fin like the Scuba Pro Sea Wing Supernova could be your go-to choice. Now, you know all the secrets and hard to find information to ensure you will pick the perfect fin for you. Also, keep in mind there is no perfect fin and it isn't a one size fits all solution. It's about finding the right balance for your diving style and environment. In my gear bag, I've got two go-to fins. For cold water dives in my dry suit, I rely on negatively buoyant fins like the Scuba Pro Jet Fins. These fins have stood the test of time. They've been around forever. 
it's the same consistent design. When I'm packing light for warm water adventures, I grab my positively buoyant Scuba Pro Supernovas. They're compact and perfect for travel. Now that you've been armed with fin knowledge, why not dive deeper into your gear? Check out my next video where I'll walk you through a full scuba assembly. I'll introduce some systems and help you understand your gear better than before. Check it out here and until next time.